Thank this you. conference will now be recorded. All right, so let's get started. So this is the RTD Accountability Committee. This is the governance subcommittee that's meeting today. Um, you know, I think that being this close to the holidays, I appreciate those who have been able to call in. I know folks have been trickling off already to, to enjoy their holidays. So thank you everyone for calling in and joining us. I really appreciate it. Um, so first off, um, we have a December 7th, 2020 meeting summary. Um, hopefully you guys were able to review those notes. Um, are there any other questions or concerns regarding the meeting summary from December 7th that folks want to draw their attention to? And if not, that's okay. But if you do have any changes, um, just let us know so that we can get them reflected in that summary. And then um, next up, and really the rest of the agenda, is uh, a roundtable discussion um, uh, that happened last week with the technical staff, so wanted to, to bring that briefing to this group formally. Um, so take it away, Doug. Great, thank you, Madam Chair, very much. And yeah, I know most of you guys were on that call on Friday, which I do appreciate you guys. Uh, you know, I know it's, it was short notice, and, being able to jump on for a little bit. I think it meant something to uh, the technical staff that were on the call. So thank you very much. So I mean, I realized, I figured it was gonna be kind of a small group today. Um, uh, Elise Jones, Commissioner Jones, she uh, she actually is on vacation this week. So so she couldn't make it. She wanted me to, to wish you all a happy holidays. Um, and uh, I don't see Kathy yet either. So maybe she's already, she already on vacation as well. But what I thought I would do today is um, I think those that were on the Friday's roundtable would agree that um, it was a great conversation, I thought. I thought very thoughtful insight from a lot of the technical staff. I'm, I'm really glad that we did it. Uh, and I just wanted to step through some, just a summary of the comments, at least according to Doug Rex, what I, what I heard, um, and share that with you all. And there are some questions that are kind of embedded in, those, in, in um, some of those slides that I'd like to get your input in, and hopefully some of this will help us in you know, getting to the next step of, of discovery with regards to this. So, oh, there you go, Melinda's sharing my screen. Okay, all right, there we go. Great, thank you very much. So, let me see here, so I did, um, for those that weren't able to attend that meeting, um, I did just provide just a, bit, a little bit of background about their, the RTD Accountability Committee, that it was a collaborative between RTD, the governor's office, and the, the transportation chairs in the legislature, um, and then just talked a little bit about the governance subcommittee and what your roles and responsibilities and tasks um, within the, the actual scope itself. Your, your task is to review the structure of RTD governance and executive leadership. And some of the identified issues that we've had conversations about include um, um, interest in um, elevating the voice of local communities in transit service planning, um, equity considerations, whether that be both social and geographic considerations in, in service delivery, and um, to help build back trust. And again, I, I say this all the time, it's not just necessarily in RTD, but in government in general. So any any opportunities we can, we can um, we can find to do that is uh, never a bad thing. Oh shoot, sorry. Okay, and then I did share with them the governance concept that we uh, had a conversation at the full accountability committee meeting in November, and then subsequently the conversations that we've had at the governance uh, subcommittee about this concept. I, I also expressed that there was um, a stronger desire to investigate option two, which is the sub-regional transit council's concept. And so then I, I, um, I had a bunch of questions associated with um, the sub-regional concept that, um, um, that, I, that I asked them and looking for their comments on. And so the first question I had was basically on the sub-regional concept itself, if this was something that they, they thought was, was worthwhile to explore and um, some of the comments we received is, I, I think most that have, were involved in the Dr. Cog sub-regional forum model um, as part of our TIP deployment um, really liked the idea. Uh, it, um, some of the comments received that it brought communities together. Some counties um, really didn't have a coordinated you know, transportation 
um, planning uh, uh, a forum across all the communities within a county. So, so this provided that opportunity for, 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 for counties and communities within those counties. Um, there was you know, obviously more engagement between the communities, so communities had a better understanding of, um, uh, of what other communities were thinking with regards to infrastructure improvements and the like with, within, within the county. And they, I think they really liked the idea that it was um, very open and transparent, that, the, that there was a lot of open dialogue and debate in those, in those, uh, in those meetings. Um, Someone had mentioned that they really saw this as an opportunity to build trust, and, and most notably, um, there was an, a real chance to maybe have conversations about re revenue increase, um, simply because if they felt that there was, um, um, that local governments had um, local communities, local involvement in, in, the, in the RTD process of service delivery, um, that there was more opportunity or probably more likelihood of um, uh, possibility of any kind of ballot initiative or something like that. But they did indicate in their comments that they really felt that um, the local involvement needed to be meaningful in order for for that trust level be um, to be um, to be there amongst their amongst their residents. Hey, listen, if anybody anybody was at that meeting feels that they have a different take on this than what I did here, please just shout it out. Or if there's anything I'm missing. Um, oh, sorry. So the, um, the next bullet here is the opportunity to develop regional goals. Um, the, uh, so I think what the concept was, and this really gets back to something that uh, Mayor Malay have mentioned several meetings ago that really seemed to resonate with me and I guess with others who have been on the call, is that you know the whole concept is this regional, sub-regional, governance model was that you know the R, the RTD board would kind of lay out those regional goals whether like the Dr. Cog you know we have Metro Vision the, the RTD board might lay out their own mission and goals kind of develop this um, I think Kathleen Brackley used the term um, regional ecosystem and then uh, really provide if, the regional sub-regional concept would provide locals then an opportunity to tailor implementation to fit their local needs, right? Um, so for example, um, you know, RTD, and this was an example, I think, uh, I think George Gerstle might be able to mention this one, that RTD may not have, might not be able to provide all available mobility options, but um, you know, local communities might be able to come up with some innovative solution which meets, meets the needs of their local environment. Um, and I thought that was quite interesting. And um, the second sub bullet there speaks to that point is it increases the flexibility of service delivery potentially. And last but not least, what they liked about the uh, sub-regional concept was, was um, uh, the, the, the opportunity that it offers for better public comment um, and public involvement, I think, um, someone had mentioned that the public, and I think this just intuitively makes sense, the public feels more comfortable commenting at a more, at a more local level. Um, you know, I know even at Dr. Cog, you know, for someone to, to actually come downtown to make a comment, they really feel strongly about something. Whereas um, if there was opportunities to provide comment at a more local, at a county level or some other level closer to the home, then um, they will probably be more apt to uh, provide that comment. Any questions or comments on on that? Any of those? Well, it's Doug. I don't know if you're. Are you going to get into it or not? But the idea that we would probably need to add some folks into these. Are you going to get to that? So I don't want to. No, I'm actually not. I had it in there, Jack, and I couldn't fit it on the slide. I'll be honest with you. So okay. <laughs> no, well, I think right. that's an. Yeah, I think that's an important piece of it be, that. Um, that while the the sub-regional work that Dr. Cog did really was at the elected and then the technical staff level that we recognize that, or the, the folks recognize that expertise from uh, the, the folks that rely on transit uh, and the equity community uh, would probably be people we would wanna bring in to these uh, local sub-regional uh, councils to advise and uh, provide input, right? So I yes. think, so it would be kind of a subset, kind of modeled after the Dr. Cog, but probably not the same um, folks. And the other thing, uh, just as a 
individual who participated in and I shared, I, I really found them to be very valuable for the local uh, countywide understanding of each other's needs and planning and uh, to, you know, kind of elevate the conversation to a bigger picture of how are we all going to work. The, the, the idea that um, some of these successful projects go from county to county, just like the Dr. Craig regional successful projects go. And so um, uh, allowing the counties to work with each other and kind of iron out the details on some of the things I think provides value other than having the full board try and do that uh, when it's an issue between, you know, a, a subset, right? Yes. No, very good, Jack. I'm glad you pointed that out too, Jackie, because there was a comment specifically made about uh, maybe the an invitation to like um, the local coordinating councils to sit on 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 the forum or the council itself um, to represent you know paratransit interests and and other interests. Um, and you're right. And I think we, I say we, the governance subcommittee has been fairly consistent with um, with an, with believing that the the council if formed needs to be more than just elected officials but users of the system and all that kind of good stuff but jackie thank you very much for pointing that out anything else on this slide do you have questions about comments okay so the next question um asked was 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 about the geography of of the transit councils themselves i mean if they had any any comments on what what that might look like? Um, should it be at the county level, like the Dr. Cog model, um, RTD board districts, the 15 districts that are currently in place, or any other kind of concept or whatever? Um, uh, there were those that did mention that they liked the the Dr. Cog model. It has served us well for our tip purposes. I mean, there's eight subregions within the RTD service area itself. We also have um, an additional um, one in, in Southwest Weld, which is not a, not applicable to this because it's outside the RTD service area. So they so um, so on its face, they kind of like that concept. I think you know there was a comfort level with that too. Um, but it, you know the question, uh, at least I quite frankly, I, I might have even been the one to say that raised this at the at the uh, roundtable. Um, is this subregion? Is the eight subregions? Is it too many? Right? Um, you know, is there you know, is there, um, and this gets to the third big bullet down here, um, you know, with regards to any concerns about staff resources at the local level or the RTD staff in, in staffing out these, these uh, sub-regional councils and the like. Um, there was a comment that was made that we, you know, we should consider a need to respect the RTD board districts. Um, so maybe there's opportunities there to combine RTD board districts. I think 15 personally is too many. Um, especially when I think maybe eight, maybe too many. Um, so are there ways to, you know, kind of use travel sheds or something like that to kind of develop what those councils might look like? Um, I think that would be a very interesting exercise to do. And um, if it's uh, something that, that the board would like us to investigate some more, we'd be happy to do that for sure. Any comments on any of that? You know, I'll just mention this, um, Mayor. I know you're jumping in there. I, so, so, so Ron mentioned on something to me the other day. He was he had pulled up the RTD board district map, um, and I, and one of the reasons I think you know the RTD board districts are too many is, for example, like a lot of the counties, they have multiple districts that board districts that touch their county, like Arapahoe County. I think Ron, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it was like six board districts um, are partially within Arapahoe County. I mean, that's that's a lot. Um, it's just, you know, it's just, I, I think it'd be just too unwieldy personally. Mayor. I, I was gonna share share that as well, but then also the idea of, um, I think there was a discussion about understanding what the backbone system was going to be, and perhaps that was gonna help guide. Um, I loved, I think it was, uh, was it Kathleen Brack Brackney who brought up the travel shed, exploring the travel yes, shed did. ideas? Yeah. And I, I actually think understanding the backbone and then the travel sheds could be, uh, I think, really guiding um, uh, geographic areas to help us. I like the idea of the counties, though, because uh, we at the local level look at the entire multimodal system that we're trying to deal and partner with each other on. So um, I, I, I 
I guess that's just my bias. Like I like the county, but I know my partners in Arapahoe County, we get together with them and talk with them often. And I think our staffs certainly do, particularly Lone Tree, because we border. Uh, so anyway, that I want, I'm yeah. curious what Dea says, but that, that's the only other thing I was going to mention. No, thank you. Dea. Yeah. Um, Doug, I was just going to mention, and I, I think I heard this mentioned in your comments, but I also just want to lift it up that those that aren't familiar, the local coordinating councils don't necessarily exist within every single county. And that's some true. of them are, um, I would say, up and coming or don't necessarily have the capacity at this point. So I just, it, depending on which direction we go and where we ultimately land, I just want to acknowledge that it's going to look different even within the, the metro yes. area. Um, and then I, I would not be uh, the transit equity person if I did not lift up that um, for me, you know, my, my biggest concern is um, how do we ensure that affected transit users, transit riders are engaged in whatever process this looks like and ensuring that they have a seat at this table, not only elected officials who are elected to represent their communities, but ultimately the residents themselves have a voice at this table as well. Definitely. No, thank you very much. Anything else from this slide? Okay. Hey, Dave, the only other thing I'd yes. share is that I got the sense that the, the, the county and public work staffs that were engaged felt like they did have the capacity and that they found these type of things very useful to them in their work. The question, the outstanding question for me at the end of it was whether what the what the capabilities of the RTD staff would be to support those efforts. So that that's the only other piece. Yeah, no, that's a great point, Jackie. I, I think you're right. Um, I think you know a lot of a lot of county staff in particular going into the Dr. Cog tip tip process were very concerned about staff resources as it related to these subregions, but I think they they saw so much value in it on the back side that it really never became much of an issue. Um, but I, I do think that's a legitimate point for RTD because they would have to staff, of course, all those subregions. So it's um, it's something we need to have an open dialogue with RTD for sure. Yeah, and Doug, I just want to jump in real quick and say that is a concern for me too. Is um, I guess that could be an equity issue when we think about that, because I think some counties probably have a lot more resources they could throw at a project like this and be really successful versus some others might and might not. And so, um, you know, I think that that is uh, a concern of mine is how do we make sure that that, you know, the work can get done and we have the appropriate people um, for all counties to be successful, um, that, that's just something that's come across my desk. Yeah, very good. Yep, thank you. Like the only other comment, and I think, I'm assuming we'll eventually get to this portion within the conversation, um, but just kind of a looming question for me after the Friday meeting, um, is really being explicit about who we're talking about that is providing the transit service. Is it these individual entities like, you know, city of Boulder, city and county of Boulder, or is it still RTD and then these counties or cities are purchasing um, additional service from RTD because I, I do remember that being a point of um, or just like a question that was that was asked and I don't know that it was fully addressed but I think that's something we we as a committee will want to wrestle with. Uh, that's that's a really good point you know and I know that at least in concept you know what we had talked about and if we were mirroring the LA Metro version to some degree um, you know you when when LA Metro made the change from um, their operating councils to service councils. They they kind of centralize operations. They don't have operations in each individual council district anymore. That the the actual service councils out there now just just uh, provide a recommendation on service delivery, any service changes, those types of things. Although I will say that the conversation on Friday did seem to allude to an idea anyway or concept that um, in the event that uh, RTD couldn't couldn't provide, you know, a mobility service which was desired maybe by a local district. That um, that you know that some other mechanism should be explored, right? Like for example, in Boulder County, like they might want to, um, you know, contract maybe with some uh, some service between Fort Worth, uh, Fort Worth. Oh my God, Fort Collins and uh, and Boulder, for example. That might not 
currently be offered. I know there is, but I'm just it's just as an example. But yeah, but I think that's a good point that we we will have to give some thought to as we go forth. But don't you think that's going to evolve? I feel like as we sit down and talk about the local service that's needed and we have an understanding of what the backbone service is that RTD is going to provide, mm -hmm. these local forums provide opportunities for us to partner at the local, more concentrated level to fully um, kind of develop mobility in our communities, right? And, and I then identify what it is, what, what are the gaps that aren't being met by RTD and then how can we partner um, with potentially RTD and or others and each other mm -hmm. to fill the gaps, right? Exactly. And, and I think there's equity issues, of course, throughout all of that. But I think understanding what the need is, is the fundamental first, what, first step. And that is best done in my mind with the local community collaborating with each other. Yeah, very good point. Uh, Doug? Yes. It's Angie Molpietti. Hey, Angie. Hey, Doug. I, I do have a question. One of the bullet points is concern about staff resources and our yes. local and RTD staff. You know, I would really appreciate if I could, uh, if we could have Bill Van Meter just kind of touch on that so that the committee can hear from the RTD staff what maybe perhaps their concern about staff resources might be. Fabulous. You're up, Thank William. You. Camera on, mic on. Okay, <laughs> that took a moment. I was uh, distracted as that uh, discussion was going on, but the question was, um, if I, so let me clarify. It was regarding the staff resources on a service council type concept. Correct. Yeah, that um, I don't have a, a complete answer to that. I have raised that in discussions internally with staff, um, the initial feedback in those discussions that I got was th the most manageable size would be four or five service councils over somewhat larger geographies. There was some receptivity to that. I'm not speaking on behalf of the organization at the moment. We haven't um, kind of finished those discussions. Um, a recognition both from that concept of you know um, logical travel sheds or sub regions for the area and kind of what makes sense our current geographies are three we have a north team an east team and a west team recognizing that that's probably not disaggregate enough there was definitely some receptivity and support to having more there was some fear to having eight now, having said that, we go out three times a year through a process to have up to 15 um, public involvement and engagement opportunities around service changes each time we do service changes. So our team is geared up towards, um, towards this, but this is layering in another level of um, you know, you know, involvement or responsibility for our teams that would be on a very regular basis. They're very open to the concept in general. So I, I don't want to be raining on anyone's grade. There was a lot of interest and excitement about how do we better close a communication gap that we've had for years, frankly, um, in my opinion, um, with local governments, a coordination, um, a giving them a better say. And I don't just shouldn't just say local governments in recognition to other discussion that has been um, had in the course of this meeting on and on Friday and past meetings. Other stakeholders, um, representatives of um, um, the dis disability community and um, equity populations in, in general. So being able to better coordinate all of that and having more meetings, not scary, having eight or 15 sets, um may be a little daunting in my initial discussion so hopefully that helps or shed some light uh, thank you bill i know it really helps me and i appreciate the frankness on this yeah because i i think that is a conversation right that's going to be had sooner or later and i i do think there's opportunity here to um uh and, and I, I know 
I know Mayor Malay put a uh, comment in the chat about the travel shed analysis might lend itself to identifying four or five councils. And I think she's probably right. But it, I think doing that analysis, um, maybe Bill, will, Dr. Cog, staff will reach out to you guys and maybe start thinking about what that might look like, some type of analysis of, of uh, travel shed. And um, yeah. maybe we can bring that, back a recommendation. That might be a, a real opportunity. And just I'll shut up after just another quick comment. And that is, you know, I threw out there, um, depending on how often we have to meet and things like that, um, countering everything I just said, I did throw out that we do gear up for and involve 15 distinct RTD member districts at some level for engagement and involvement. And so um, I'm hedging my bets in, in terms of my comments. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll end my comments there. <laughs> Thank you, Bill. Director Whitmore. Yeah, this is a little off track, but just a thought. I had a conversation with one of the uh, UTA, I believe they're trustees in Salt Lake. Perhaps you know, Doug, but um, yes. Um, interesting um, situation there. They have one council that oversees the three trustees that are now appointed. Um, so obviously a smaller geographic footprint, a um, smaller city, but um, that uh, council is comprised of folks that mirror you folks on the accountability committee in a big way. And they basically set the salaries for the, uh, for the trustees. And I believe they meet with the trustees five times a year. Um, I don't have a lot more information about it, but it, it, it's an interesting uh, model that, that might, might have some um, input, uh, quality for for this group may perhaps not i just wanted to throw that in and uh person i talked to was very open to visiting with uh anybody on the accountability committee um or other rtd board members if uh, the need arises thanks doug and julie oh, thank you troy very much it's um yeah so we're familiar with that with that model as well um it was one of the two options that we explored with regards to local now, I would suggest if we hit some really major roadblocks with regards to this sub-regional concept, that that is a model that we, you know, at the pleasure of the subcommittee that we will explore. Um, it's it's relatively new too, Troy, as, as you know, they just went through a whole, whole new governance process themselves and they came up this advisory committee, which is representatives of local government, which serve on this advisory committee and they, they review recommendations before they go to, uh, to, to the board of trustees, as you suggest. Yeah, no, thank you, sir. Anything else on this slide? Okay, did I just, okay. So, um, what is this? Oh yeah, so, so the next question I asked with regards to um, regional versus local transit service. So we've talked about this whole concept of a trunk system, core system that um, would operate on the regional level that um, RTD, I mean, RTD has responsibility for all of this. So I'm just, you know, I, I, I don't want it to sound like they don't, but there's so the regional service operations would be uh, first and foremost provided by um, RTD. And then the local service would, um, uh, would at least in part um, be recommended what that service would look like at the local level would be provided by the subregions, not provided by the subregions, but um, um, what am I trying to say? This service delivery would be recommended by the subregions. Anywho, so we had a conversation about, you know, what is regional regional um, service? What is the core network? And I most agreed that it's really, you know, RTD service classes make a whole lot of sense with regards to this. So basically, any kind of regional service is, you know, light rail, commuter rail, regional bus, probably express bus. Um, ADA service that's you know more regional in nature um, and any other district-wide services right so those I think everybody feels pretty comfortable with that I think it gets a, a little squirrely when we start talking about um, uh, you know what happens when you know routes cross multiple counties you know it's that you know how would these sub-regions coordinate on those multiple 
multiple um, county routes, um, for example. Um, there's also some, there was a question that was asked with regards to, you know, what if a, there's, there's a, there's a service that's offered that's regional in nature that resides only within the county. Is that the responsibility um, in the service planning world at the local level or is that at the regional level? You know, stuff like that. Um, oops, sorry. Golly, no, I did it. Sensitive mouse. Hey, Deborah. Deborah did have a question in the chat. Oh, okay. And I think it was regarding two slides ago. Oh, has anyone asked APTA for help with relevant models? What relative, what, like governance models, Deborah? I think I that was relative. Oh, go ahead, Deborah. If you're on, go ahead and speak to it. Yes, for relevant models such as we've been looking at with LA Metro and Utah and others. Seems like they should have a handle on this. Yeah, you would think, wouldn't you? Um, I I have reached out. I'll be honest, I have not received a response. I don't know, Bill. If that's Bill Van Meter, we can talk offline. Maybe maybe um, you can help me get get in contact with the right person over there. Because um, yeah. I was, yeah, that'd be great, Bill, if you could. Because I was really looking at it, Deborah, at the time. You know, when we put together that kind of little matrix of uh, different regions throughout the throughout the country and what their governance model was like. So just FYI, I yeah, I have not received anything from them. It could even be more timely now that we have a little better sense of what we're trying to accomplish. So to continue our learn, accelerate our learning by from the experts. Excellent. We're dues paying members, so we might get a better response. <laughs> yes, sir. Sounds good. I'll be in touch, Bill. Anything on this slide? I think this was the one we felt, you know, oh, and just so you, everybody knows, um, we will be receiving a presentation by RTD. I think Bill Saroy is going to lead that conversation about um, the conversation they had associated with Reimagine RTD and the core system. So he, he'll be providing that at the January 4th meeting. Anything else? Okay. So the next conversation we had was about allocation of resources amongst the uh, the transit councils. So, and you know, this this is a conversation that still needs to occur. Um, you know, if when I say if if the final recommendation is that there would be some allocation of of resources um, to each subregion, what would that look like, right? I mean, because there's two concepts here, right? There's one where the transit council would be development, would be, um, uh, their role would be just a recommendation on service planning, right? So changes to the current system, for example, would reside, that decision would reside, at least a recommendation of that would reside with, this, with the, with the um, service council. Um, now there's this other concept, which is kind of more, is a beefed up version of that, is that there would be, an allocation of resources to each subregion in order to fulfill ser service needs within that district or council. Um, it's it comes pretty complicated. One, you know what you know what would that resource allocation look like? Like how would you determine what that would look like? Like for example, would you would it be a share of district taxable sales, um, share of district population, share of um, employment within the district, what have you. Um, if they were to go that route and it was possible that we could even get that information, um, which population employment, taxable sales, you definitely can. Um, you know, what would that look like? Which variables would you use? And I think most that did comment at the meeting agreed that it would be a combination of those variables. It's kind of what we did for the Dr. Cog tip model. We use, for example, we use population employment and BMT were the three um, three variables we used, um, and they were um, uh, we applied them equally, equally weighted. So anyway, there, there be a, need to be a lot more conversation about that. Of course, um, people did feel that uh, that a share of vulnerable, the vulnerable population within each district was was important, um, and the need to speak to the existing riders as well was was important. Um, so but uh, there was a comment that in order to make an un to to uh, you know to really comment on this idea, 
there needs to be a better understanding of how much it costs to operate ex the existing local service within within uh, a district. Um, so that information, you know, um, you know, we need to make sure that's readily available in order for us to investigate and explore this a little further. And I know it's n sometimes not easy to do, obviously, because many of the routes they do cross county boundaries, for example. So there need to be some mechanism in place to proportionally allocate how much money would go to any one uh, service council, if it were, certainly if it were ca uh, counties. And the last comment that really resonated with me is, you know, don't overcomplicate this. You know, keep it as simple as possible. Because uh, what we found in the Dr. Cog model and the three variables that we used, any combination, if you weighted them a different way, it really didn't make that much of a difference as far as allocation. So we just want to make sure that the process is transparent and you know we show the math and and type you know you know tie back to um, um, uh, you know any kind of you know targets or overall policies that we want to establish as uh, as a region. Any questions or comments on this? Okay. So those were the questions specific to the um, to the subregional transit councils that I had asked. I I asked if um, oh shoot, sorry. I asked um, if they had just any just general general concerns about the the concept itself. And as was mentioned earlier, resource allocation was the one that that uh, was mentioned a couple times. Um, and you know, I think one takeaway for me today is this whole concept of uh, travel sheds and and maybe the necessity to do an evaluation to, to see if there are any trends which make sense and we can match up with uh, with districts. Um, another comment that was made, which uh, I thought made a whole lot of sense, is that you know we don't want to get lost in the in in the details and the vacuum and the and the opportunity that this model presents, we will still want to make sure that the, the process that we're creating does, um, does not negatively affect the existing service we have. We want to make sure that it's an enhancement on the existing service, right? So we just want to keep that in the back of our mind that, you know, we want to make sure that we're asking the, the question that this committee has asked itself right from the beginning is, what problem are we trying to solve? And if it's so bureaucratic that it just, we cannot deliver results. We we can't be fearful to admit that to ourselves for sure. <clears throat> and um, and last but not least, what is a necessity to develop a process for communication between the sub sub regional transit councils and the RTD board to make sure that that process is understood between the the the, the sub regional councils and the board. Um, and that will, of course, be done jointly between everybody and anybody who wants to be involved in that. But I, I think that's important to, to lay that out so there's no misunderstanding. Because one of the things that we heard from the LA Metro example was that um, the board members um, really did not have a great understanding of what the roles and responsibilities were of their service councils. I was surprised when um, when staff, when they presented to us, they said that. Um, but uh, we want to make sure that there's, you know, a clear understanding with regards to, you know, what the purpose and role of the service councils are, and that they're they're basically they're here to help, right? They're providing service to the RTD board um, in their enhancement of all the responsibilities that that the RTD board has. Any questions on this one? Okay. So the. The last slide I had here, I did ask them um, if there were any other RTD governance issues that they felt uh, would be, you know, we needed to address maybe at this the, the uh, uh, governance subcommittee. And the the one that was raised, um, and there was only one, uh, relates to the evaluation of uh, public comment protocols. So I, I guess I, I guess that really, I'll be honest, I never I never understood this, but at the subcommittees, there is no public comment. The public comment is only at the actual board meetings. And Troy, correct me if I'm wrong, sir, but um, th this person that, that made this comment suggested that public comment should, should be allowable or maybe 
um, even desirable at the sub region at the subcommittee level, simply because that's really where the work is done, right? Like the actual recommendation is made out of those subcommittees. And if it's unanimous, then it just goes on consent at the board meetings. Um, so maybe it's better the, the the RTD board would be better served if they can receive public comment at the subcommittee level versus the RTD board level or at both places. You're muted, Troy. That's correct on how it um, how it works at this point in time, and uh, haven't given a great deal of thought to that. I know our board chair is on the call if she has an opinion on that, but certainly something to to think about. I, I see where they're coming from. Yeah, thank you, Troy. Angie, do you have any comments on that? Hi, Doug. No, uh, thank you. The only thing that I think about about the sub-regional councils is uh, the inclusivity of the Title VI component analysis as well as the ADA community so that if there is sub-regional councils, that it'd be inclusive of all uh, demographics that we serve in all of those areas. Excellent comment. Yep, indeed. Hey, uh, Angie, did you have any thoughts on this? This uh, I, I don't know if you can see my slide up here. Um, there was someone at the, the round table on Friday that, that talked about public comment and that public comment is only offered at the RTD board meetings and not at the subcommittee meetings. And maybe there's uh, maybe there, there, there's there's a desire, or maybe should be a desire to have public comment at the subcommittee meetings too, because since that's really where the work is done. So you're talking about our traditional committee meetings that Correct. happen before they bring it forward to the board meeting. That's and correct. you know what, Doug, I, I have not thought about that. Um, I do know that if I look at other governing committees, uh, they're done they're done at the official board meetings is where they usually have public comment. And right. so I do think it is something um, worth discussing, but currently we follow the protocol based on uh, the traditional methodology of getting public input after the committees and the staff of the board sit down and look at things. And the board members actually go out and talk to their constituents before they make those comments at the committee meetings as well as, as the board meetings. So by the time they get to the board, they have done their work out in their districts. Oh, very good. Yeah, that's good perspective. No, thank you. So, any, anything else? So that's that's all I had. Uh, I Again, I just want to emphasize um, how good I thought that meeting was. I, I, I really got some useful information. I hope other board members did or other committee members did as well. I think as a group, we should utilize some more as we go forth and check in periodically with them. If it's your pleasure to do so, we're happy to set that up. Um, but I would just, Madam Chair, I'd just throw it back to you and see if there's any uh, general questions, comments, uh, direction you'd like to provide staff that we can uh, flush out for the next meeting or and over the next month. Thank yeah, you. so let's go to questions. Dea, I see your mic is off. Yeah, no, I just wanted to thank you again, Doug, for making that meeting available um, to the members of the committee. I, I found it very useful and I do think it's it's worth it for us to um, continue to tap that group for additional feedback. Um, I do, I, I also just want to acknowledge and appreciate the last comment um, regarding the subcommittee, uh, some sort of subcommittee public comment, and maybe it's not in the subcommittees, but I want to encourage us to think about how we may be able to better engage um, the general public and just getting feedback to the RTD board sooner rather than later. I will only speak from, from my experience and the experience that I heard from community organizers as they were advocating for the affordable fare that sometimes it, it felt very, um, no one really knew what point in time do they go to an RTD board meeting to provide the comments before the decision gets made. So I, in just thinking about how that's received and perceived from the community resident perspective, I want us to kind of keep, keep that front of mind um, since they are the constituents we're all serving. Very good, thank you, Daya. Yeah, thank you, Daya. I think those are some great points of conversation. And so um, just so you know, I don't know what's going I'm having some tech issues, so I don't know if my camera is working or not. So if you see me, I'll try not to pick my nose, all right? Um, <laughs> for, the most part, um, for the most part, are there any other questions 
or comments that this group wanted to raise um, from the meeting last week. I mean, I thought it was absolutely fantastic to have all of those, um, you know, great local experts um, all on the same call, kind of throwing and bouncing off ideas. Um, you know, these are the people that I know from, from my role as a city council member, I look to um, for help and guidance. And so I really appreciated having them all together um, and appreciated their comments and thoughts. Um, so thank you so much for putting that together. Um, any other questions? I want to just open it up one last time for this group. Any highlights that you think were most important from Doug's overview? All right. So I think next steps, um, there's a couple things that we uh, talked about. Doug, you said there was a, um, a presentation from RTV coming up. I see Deborah Baskett's um, comment in the chat talking about how it would be probably helpful for this um, subcommittee to have a presentation from RTD about service planning and how it's currently done now, just so that we have a better understanding of how that works. Um, and I would love to, I, I really do appreciate Bill jumping in <laughs> off the cuff, I think, um, to give us his opinion on um, how it's currently done as well. So I think more information from RTD could be helpful in helping us just better understand this process. Um, and what are some steps to do forward? Um, and then other than that, some of the next steps I would really like to see, and maybe um, a lot of this could just, you know, further, like, I, I feel like we've gathered so much information over the course of this past couple months. Um, and I feel like we need to kind of put it down as we kind of start start to structure out our recommendations in, in the directions we still have to go that also might help us identify some of the gaps that we wanted and um, one of the takeaways that I had from last Friday um, when it came to resource allocation um, I think you know looking at the data that we already have available from RTD to try and answer some of those questions um, could be helpful so for me I feel like I have all of this information in my head <laughs> and I need to start like um, putting it down um, to help essentially just kind of coming up with like a, a framework of how we're going to be moving forward with some various options that this group still needs to discuss. So, um, you know, going forward with, are, is it going to be a county level type service council? And then how many, I guess, is the next big question that we're talking about, right? Um, which is a realistic concern. Um, and then, you know, travel shed um, analysis and things like that. So, collecting all those other bits of information to try and start pulling this together and identifying gaps where we're not, where we're still there, um, of where to move forward with the recommendation on that. Um, so those are my thoughts about how do we move forward from here. And so I'm gonna work with Doug um, to, uh, just so you know, Doug, I'm gonna work with you um, to start working on, on trying to figure out how we could pull some of these ideas together um, and bring it back to this group um, in January. Um, are there any other specific, because we had lots of comments today of things that we still need, any other ideas or presentations that this group would like to have brought back um, for January? Madam Chair, I'll just say this. Um, so, you know, we're, we're, start, we're putting together, you know, the preliminary report right now. So, so a lot of this... Yeah. So a lot of the components associated with this this governance concept, you know, we'll I'll, you know those will start to be put down on paper, um, and uh, I'm going to do it in a way I hope that will provide you know kind of a task list of things to do, um, you know, that we'll be readily involved with over the next next couple months associated with this um, as we as we uh, kind of bear it out. So, so, so that should help, and you'll see that early next week. Awesome, great, yeah, no, that's fantastic, thanks, Doug. So, yeah, I think um, hammering out some of those ideas, and then, um, you know, I feel like we have some good presentations coming back for our next meeting, and then our next couple meetings, um, and then um, from there, continuing to receive feedback as as we go about this journey, um, you know, having the uh, technical staff weigh in again, I think would be a fantastic opportunity, um, not only to gain further insight from that group and, and allow them to, to express their opinions, 
Um, and so I'd like to see perhaps another one of those, uh, I don't know, maybe in the next month or so, um, to, to weigh back in on. Cause that was, I just absolutely love that meeting. That was great. Um, yeah. so hey, Julie, yeah, look, look, yes. Can I mention this real quick? I think, you know, this whole travel shed, uh, conversation analysis that, you know, we're hoping to take on. And again, and we'll talk with our TD staff about the best way to do that. Um, I would, I would, if with the permission of the subcommittee, I would really like to engage that technical work group to come up with maybe some recommendation to 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 the subcommittee mm -hmm. with regards to what the districts, how many, and what it should be. Um, mm -hmm. If that's appeasing to everybody, and I see at least some head nods. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah, and Doug, and I and I think maybe this could be a good opportunity to discuss. Like, do you feel like there would be a usefulness of even kind of creating a technical subcommittee that you could continue to work with and and kind of gain those insights from moving forward or is it just going to continue to be on like an ad hoc basis oh it's a good question um let us talk internally about that you know good lord the idea of doing like another standing meeting a committee it just oh my god it just i don't know if yeah. we get there but i do think you know if it's something that's very task oriented that we can yeah. meet as many times as we feel we need to meet in order to, to get a recommendation back to you guys timely. So um, mm -hmm. let us just have some conversations internally about that. Okay, that sounds good. Awesome. And and that is, those are all the comments that I had about um, this great work and, and how to continue it and push it for um, next month. Um, do I have anyone else on the phone who would like to weigh in? Um, other thoughts or comments? Hearing none, seeing none. <laughs> I think that that is kind of a, a, the summary of our next steps coming forward. Um, I don't know, Doug, that's all I got. Is there anything else you wanted to cover with this group before we we let it go? No, Madam Chair, the gift of time. That's what uh, <laughs> you can you always give the time. gift of time, especially during the holiday season. Give the gift of time is never a bad thing. Exactly. So I hope everyone enjoys your next seven minutes um, <laughs> that we gave you back. Um, and really, thank you, you all, for your all your hard work this year. It's been really, um, it's been fun so far as we continue to to really discuss and dissect a lot of these issues. And I hope everybody has a, a great holiday, be safe, have um, you know some really good quality time with your family. And I think that's the best we could all ask for at the end of this crazy year. <laughs> Amen. All right. All right, everybody, thank you. Thank you for calling in. I hope you enjoy um, the rest of your evening and your holiday. Talk to you later. Thanks, everyone. Happy holidays. Good seeing everyone. Happy holidays. Cheers. Bye-bye. Yeah.